Aloha and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm your host, Mitch Ewan. Our underwriter is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, which is a program under the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. I'm very pleased to welcome our guest today, Megan Russell. She's a graduate assistant uh, working for the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Megan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mitch. Good to so, be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Our topic today is going to be the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, funnily enough, under new management. Throughout its history, the forum has constantly strived to remain relevant and at the front edge of Hawaii's energy policy space and adjusted its programs to support Hawaii's evolving energy situation in all its many facets. HNEI has recently taken over the overall management of the forum and has a new leadership team. And as with all the leadership teams, they have new ideas and new initiatives going forward from 2022 and beyond, including broader membership, more outreach, and analytics-based policy development. So we're going to be talking story with Megan about the progress being made in this transition and some of the early results of interviews and, and past and potentially new stakeholders. Megan, tell us about the new program and how it's evolving. And let's have slide number one up to help guide us through this. Perfect. Um, so like you mentioned, Mitch, we've been restarted. We're under new management. Our principal investigator is Mark Glick. And then Dallas Ige and myself are the graduate assistants that are aiding in this effort to revitalize the forum. Um, so our three um, energy transition focus areas are up on the screen, as you can see. Number one being the high penetration renewable analysis and planning. Number two is our energy transition policy and regulations. And then our third area here is white innovation initiative. And as we've been re-engaging our stakeholders, um, we've been sending them these three areas to get feedback on them, um, understand what the needs of our stakeholders are, um, and using that to really be the driver for how the forum proceeds. Um, so if we can... So, so I have a couple of questions on that. So uh, one, one of the issues, not an issue, but one, one of the ideas we had is, is there still a, an interest? Because, you know, we, we've had a, at least about a two-hour, a two-year... Two um, delay or where we've gone play basically out of business uh, through the COVID, changes in management, a whole variety of things. So what, is, what has been the reaction from A, the existing stakeholders and new people? Is there still that same interest in having this kind of a forum in, in, in Hawaii? There really is. Um, as we've talked to people, especially our previous stakeholders, we've gotten a really positive response. Um, people are excited to come back and start discussing energy policy in this space again. I think the forum really provides a unique space for that discussion, for productive discussions on these difficult questions relating to energy. And especially with COVID-19, we saw a lot of changes that needed to be addressed. And we've seen a lot of, um, for lack of a better term, weak points in our system. And people are ready to jump in and engage and talk with us about that um, and create so, uh, solutions to these problems. So, so is there any like overarching theme that you've been able to identify from them? I mean, what, what is driving that interest? I think really what's driving the interest, I mean, overarching themes from our interviews, we've talked a lot about equity. And we've also talked a lot about resource adequacy um, and inviting new people into this space. So one of the main changes that we've seen from the previous forum um, is broader membership opportunities. We're really opening up to more individuals, more organizations, um, all for the purpose of garnering these diverse voices that we have access to in the state. I think we're so lucky to live in a diverse space um, and we have such diverse energy needs that opening up the forum to more people uh, will help us to get those viewpoints to create creative solutions and maybe think outside of the box a little bit more. Yeah, I've always thought that even from uh, day one when I first joined the forum a, a zillion years ago that, you know, one of the things that we lacked was uh, maybe showing a balanced view of various policies like, okay, we're more um, 
supporting a, a, um, a given policy rather than presenting a more complete picture of the pros and cons of each uh, proposal that went forward to the legislature. I've always thought that if I was a legislature, a legislator, I'd, I'd want to know what the good things are and what the potential uh, hooks are or unintended consequences are. And then I can make my own decision. I don't need somebody to tell me whether it's good or not. Uh, just tell me why it's, you know, you know what, what it fixes and what the potential downsides are. Do you, can you comment on that? Of course. Um, so, and some of the questions we've been getting as we've been re-engaging stakeholders, um, I think previously the forum played a big role in legislation, whether it was advocacy or other things. Um, and as we've been re-engaging, we've been trying to navigate that space as well. Um, I think what you just described, the giving kind of, as this is a space for kind of more neutral analysis, uh, being able to go through these proposed legislations um, and give input saying, here's what would be beneficial for these stakeholders, here's what would not be, um, and providing our legislators with that opportunity to kind of have this, maybe more of a neutral view on these bills that are being proposed in the upcoming legislative session. And, and I also understand from talking to Mark and also looking at your slides, which we'll put them up, you know, a little bit more of analytics involved. So that's not just opinion. And gee, I feel good about this. It's actually backing up opinions or these uh, uh, descriptions of a, a bill with, with good data to show the legislator it's actually based on fact or has some scientific basis behind it. So it's just not an opinion. Uh, an opinion poll. Precisely. So that's another thing you mentioned in your intro that the forum has been in this effort to stay relevant. And part of that staying relevant is being a resource for people. So having these data analytics available, whether it be through our website or through legislative briefings um, or other things that people can go to and reference and use in their own investigation of these legislative efforts, um, as well as broader efforts organized by us and other stakeholders in the state. So that brings me up to one of my other favorite little topics, and you've had a heads up, you know, talk to, talk to us a little bit about our website. Uh, I, I found it personally, uh, because I'm not a really high tech computer person, I, I found it kind of difficult to use. But that's just me. Now, maybe other people thought it's great. Uh, what, what are the plans for our website? I mean, websites are so difficult to design and put them up is a heck of a lot of work. And we, you know, previously, we, we put a lot of effort in that website, uh, had a lot of good intentions. Um, what, what are your comments or what, are your, what can you tell us about the website and how, how it's going to evolve? Of course. So for clarity, um, we had originally two kind of outlets. We had our forum and then we had our public facing website. And the forum was more interfacing um, for members and stakeholders. And I believe that's what you're referring to with the difficulty of navigation. But as we've kind of revived this forum following COVID, the initial hit, um, we've taken the forum more in the direction of open membership, transparency, um, being available to whoever would like to be involved. And so as of now, we don't have plans to revitalize the forum. It's still under discussion, um, but we are kind of shifting our efforts more to that public facing website. Like right. I said, having it be a repository of data um, and other resources that people might need so that when people want information on energy or uh, legislative dealings in Hawaii, they can come to our website and have access to that information. So one other question, which you did get a heads up on, I'm gonna ask you about the forum governance. Uh, I mean, I know uh, Mark is gonna run it as the PI and you guys are gonna be supporting him and I'll be supporting him too. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we had this structure in the, in the uh, forum where we had a steering group, where we had a chair of the steering group, and then we had uh, working groups, and it kind of acted like a board of directors to try to, um, 
set the policy or set the tasks and the plan for the year and then sponsor various uh, events and, and going forward. It was kind of how, how we got people involved to actually work in, in the, in the uh, forum. Uh, what's the uh, plan or what's the thoughts? I mean, it may be too early to comment on it, but it's, how, how is it going to be structured going forward? What, what can you tell us today? Another great question. Um, I think as of now, as we're re-engaging stakeholders, that's another thing we're still trying to navigate. And I, we haven't landed anywhere specific on it. I think the idea of having specialized groups to focus on different areas of concern is definitely part of the plan. As far as governance goes with steering committees, um, yeah, it's definitely still in discussion with that. But we're excited to be able to reorganize and really make this an accessible place for everyone in the state. Right. So uh, finally, uh, my final question before we get to some of your slides is, you know, the forum traditionally put on some big events. I mean, one of the biggest ones and probably the most important one was the annual legislative brief where we had all the legislators uh, in the auditorium before COVID the last this, this year we had it all online in Zoom and actually went pretty well. Uh, but uh, what's the plan going forward for events? And the other event we had was Energy Day, um, which was uh, usually held over at the YWCA. So what, what's the current thinking among the team right now? Well, let me tell you. Um, right now, we plan to continue with those events. I think they're great ways to engage the community, engage those outside of the forum, um, bring awareness to kind of our goals and the things that our stakeholders would like to do. So as of now, we do have a legislative briefing day planned for January 10th at the legislature. Um, and we are so excited to be holding that in person this year. I do agree with you, though. I think they did an excellent job of holding the online when it went really smooth and there was a lot of great content. But yeah, this year we will be in person at the ledge on January 10th. Um, and then we do have plans to continue with Energy Day as well. So we're very excited about both of those. OK, so it'll be an in-person event, not a Zoom event. It will. It will be broadcast, though. I don't think via Zoom. Um, I'll have to get more information for you on that, but stay tuned. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's uh, uh, pull up the next slide and uh, let's work through some of the more detailed uh, elements in, in what we want to talk about today. So let's have slide two up. Perfect. So take it away, Megan. All right. So our first transition area of focus is this high penetration renewable analysis and planning. And these are ideas that we've been bringing to our stakeholders and getting feedback on. So data collection and analysis, like we've touched on, we would love for our website to be a place where people can go for these resources regarding energy, regarding policy. Um, our second point there is utility plans um, and integrated grid processes. Um, there are a lot of unique projects going on in the state right now uh, with HECO, with um, the County of Kauai and Molokai as well. Um, a lot of innovative things happening with renewable energy sources. Um, and those bleed into our community plans and really creating resilience in the state. Um, and these are all topics of discussion that we would like to address as a forum. So that's our first transition area there that we're focusing on. Okay, so let's have the next slide up. Perfect. So our second slide here um, is energy transition policy and regulation. Now, obviously, we are a policy forum. So this is a big one. Um, but governance in our policy framework, and then improvements and policy objectives. Now, what I'd really like to touch on here is the Biden administration's recent passing of the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. Right. A lot of money, um, a lot of possibilities. And one thing we'd like to do as a forum and that we will be addressing in our legislative briefing is the dispersal of those funds. Um, we want to make it more of a transparent process. We'd like our stakeholders and people in the state to know how much of that is coming to Hawaii um, to be able to plan for what we really want to achieve in the state. 
which is cleaner energy, higher functioning processes, and equity among ratepayers and energy receivers. Yeah, I was on a uh, workshop this morning uh, that was sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy, all about the uh, the budgets coming down for renewable energy, and in particular, in this case, it was a hydrogen. And there's billions of dollars uh, standing by, and they have a really short time frame for actually getting that money out the door. So they are like having to step it up for like the last 20 years. It's been like uh, they barely had enough money to survive, and it was a kind of like you know, save, save high. I'm, I'm focusing on hydrogen, but that could be on other renewables too. But in this case, it was like try to save, uh, save hydrogen. Now it's like they almost have more money than they know how to handle. And it's, it's not a panic situation, but it's, it's going to totally change the, the way they do business because they have to get these large amounts of money out. And from our point of view, and this is where I think the forum can really be helpful is try to be uh, help coordinate the state's response to all this mar uh, money that's coming out for the various programs and set some kind of a priority on uh, what is best for the state. What's the biggest thing we need to focus on? What's number two? What's number three? And uh, start working with the group to develop plans for that because the funding opportunity announcements are going to be coming out fast and thick and the response times are gonna be very short. So we have to think of, it's, it's, it, we're not gonna have six months to prepare a response. We might have one or one or a half or two months to prepare a response and get it going. So it's kind of a whole shift in the way we do business. And those that are prepared and ready to go and have a cogent plan are gonna be, gonna be the guys that win the, win the pot. So I'm not quite sure myself who in the state is actually sitting up on top coordinating all that. It, it, it could be the Hawaii Energy uh, Office, the State Energy Office. Um, that's probably a good organization to do that. I mean, that's kind of what you'd think the Energy Office would do. Uh, supported by, you know, of course, HNEI, we're kind of like the research arm for the state. And, uh, and here's where the Energy Policy Forum could really play a role in, in commenting on what's a good uh, program and what's not, i.e. the pros and the cons, like we were talking about. And uh, that would uh, surely engage our stakeholders because they're all going to be interested and want to have a place at the table and get their opinions in. So I think this is something that the forum should be embracing as we go forward. What do Precisely. you think? And I think that is, we, we relate to that completely. That's our hope is that we can make this more of, like I said, a transparent process so that people aren't blindsided and say, oh my gosh, we have so much money and no plans with what to do with it. And by kind of mapping out this process of how the monies will be distributed, um, give, it, give people a chance to plan and to prepare with meaningful projects for the state, exactly. Yeah, and get their good ideas uh, front and center so that, so that people know about it. You know, if nobody knows about it, you're not going to get any money. You know, it's like, and it's going to be a team effort. It's not like one individual is going to be able to go in and scoop up like, you know, $20 million for their pet project. I mean, the way they've scoped this out, you know, you have to have workforce development, you have to have uh, social justice, you have to have a whole variety of things that make up your, uh, your project. So, this slide um, is my favorite. It's the most exciting one to me, the, the Hawaii Innovation Initiative. Um, so the first term on here is innovation sandbox. And that's something that's come up in a lot of our interviews, um, speaking with stakeholders. What you provide such a unique opportunity and test ground for new ways to distribute energy, to create energy. There's just endless opportunities here. Um, and talking to our stakeholders, equity has been a big piece that has come up too. Like you mentioned, when these projects come down and the funds come through, um, social justice and equity is a big piece of everything that's happening because we do want to make sure that energy is being distributed to all people. I mean, in, in my brain, 
The energy system is akin to the food system. Everybody eats and virtually everybody uses energy. So we need ways to distribute that equitably um, and make sure that everyone's getting what they need at a rate that they can afford. Um, and so- Oh, sorry, go ahead. You finish your thought and I have one follow up. No problem. Um, so that's also been linking into our efforts to open up membership to engage this group of diverse voices um, and give people a seat at the table to really discuss their needs going forward. Yeah, so uh, one of the big needs uh, I've, I've uh, observed in working on my bus project, for example, is workforce development because, you know, uh, we've, we've been a fossil fuel economy forever. And uh, this is all new stuff. And I, I, there's a lot of fear um, and uncertainty among the workforce. I'm not talking about academics and people like that. I'm talking about the blue collar guy, the guys that actually do the work um, are worried about their jobs and how, how can they fit in this new economy? What skills do they need? How do we teach them the skills? I mean, you know, it's not like you're being a coal miner. We're not gonna be mining coal anymore. Uh, what do I do? And so this is something we have to address. And in fact, uh, you know, certainly in the hydrogen presentations today, you know, 5% of the, of the funding uh, they've earmarked uh, has to go to workforce development because so they've recognized the fact that we have to make this transition and, and bring the uh, workforce along with us so that people don't feel that they're being abandoned. And uh, the universities and community colleges can certainly play a role in that, but they have to also understand it's like, uh, it's not an academic exercise. We're not looking for PhDs and masters. We're looking for the guy who can swing the wrenches and can do the work, um, partic and particularly in the heavy electric area, because we're talking electric transportation, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there's a lot of safety issues involved. So and I think this is another area where the forum can play a role to make sure that this is not being uh, missed or ignored or forgotten about. Exactly. So as we're engaging our previous stakeholders, we're also engaging new stakeholders in the state. Um, people who previously weren't part of the forum, but as we engage in this innovation and this kind of sandbox idea, um, engaging entrepreneurs, engaging other entities and people with fresh ideas to come to the table and discuss creative solutions to these big problems. Um, and part of that is- oh, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, all good. Um, part of that is creating more jobs and job security as we approach these creative solutions to kind of bolster our own economy. At the same time, we bolster the energy system here. So I have a question, you know, one of these little buzzwords, sandbox. So now if I'm a millennial, you know, whatever, I, 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 kind of understand, I kind of understand what a sandbox is. But for the normal general public, what, what do they mean by this sandbox? Well, let me give you my definition of it really quick. There you um, go. It's, it's important to make sure that you're using terms correctly, but um, a place to kind of explore try new ideas and try them on a smaller scale so that in case something goes terribly wrong, um, you're not harming people. Um, sandbox, like as a kid, when you would play in a sandbox, you can build new things, you can try new things, um, you can explore and there's minimal consequences to that exploration minimal negative consequences to the outside world. You're really contained in a space as you're doing it. Okay. And so that's, as we move forward, it's starting small. It's testing these on a small scale, um, but still allowing for that full creative uh, spectrum to be able to try these new ideas and get to creative solutions to the difficult problems. Okay, thanks for that. So let's go through some of these other uh, bullets here on your slides. Uh, I'll, I'll let you uh, lead the way. Perfect. And I'll only interrupt when I want to. Okay. Um, so as you can see here, we have EV charging infrastructure, fast charging network planning, um, all hot topics and things that Hawaii is looking at to improve our uh, greenhouse gas emissions in the future to reduce those. Um, 
And the discussion that's happened around that really is resource adequacy. Uh, how do we address the new needs on the grid as we create these charging infrastructures as we move forward trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? Um, transportation is one of the biggest generators of greenhouse gas emissions. I think as the state's goal is to achieve 100% renewable by 2045, um, we like to look at electricity and we like to focus on that as the way that we're going to achieve that 100% renewable. Um, but really when we look at it, transportation is a huge piece of that. Um, and so creating that infrastructure and creating the resource adequacy to support the infrastructure is so important. And then well, the other there, thing, oh, go ahead. The other thing with uh, electrification of transportation is, and transportation in general, is that you've got so many individuals, you've got hundreds of thousands of people who have their own way of doing it. Whereas the grid is relatively easier from the point of view of you have three or uh, two major players here in Hawaii, ECO and uh, KIUC, and you can you have a PUC that can command them to do certain things. But when you got tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who want to make their own choices. I want to own a big pickup truck because I like it. It's big, it's tough. I can go to the beach, you know, don't tell me I can't use my pickup truck. You know, there's a, it's a lot more difficult to change the, uh, the, uh, the way people think the whole, the whole, I call it corporate culture or the whole transportation culture has to be changed. Agreed. It's definitely more than providing the infrastructure and providing the tools. Um, but I think it's also a huge part of it is making sure that there is a way for people to have electric vehicles to use that space. Um, I mean, for myself, minus financial status, my biggest hindrance to getting an electric car would be I don't know where to charge it. There you go. Just don't have the resources to do that. And so as we build that, I think the hope is that people will see this as an accessible option. And really that plays back into our equity we've been talking about is allowing a space for everyone to at least have the opportunity to engage in that space, whether it be now or in the future when they want to or need to. And of course, the forum can certainly play a role by allowing everybody to um, share their opinions. Like, you know, I like this or I don't like that. And that's feedback that can be passed up the line to the legislators and to the people who control that. So we're getting kind of close to the end of our time. I told you this would go fast. <laughs> so uh, let's just talk quickly about your last uh, two bullets and then we can kind of wrap it up. Perfect. So our last two points here, um, the role of accelerators and then exploring the mechanism for energy financing. So like I have said previously, engaging with new members in this space, um, engaging with the acceler elemental accelerator being one of them um, and the entrepreneurs that they work with, um, the fresh ideas that they have coming up. Uh, I think there's a lot of good things going on in the space that maybe they those ideas don't get distributed as fast a pace and the form can kind of act as a conduit to distribute that information to all the players in the state um, and give people access to those ideas faster than they normally would have them and it also plays back into our sandbox idea where you kind of have this comfort this safe space to test out these ideas um, and then move forward with them. Granted, they're successful. Okay, well, you know, uh, Megan, we've come to the end of our time and uh, we'll have you back and, uh, and uh, your cohort, your uh, comrade in arms, Dallas, <laughs> and Mark Glick, uh, El Supremo, have him come back and uh, talk to us as, as this evolves and as we go through it. I'd love to be able to have some of our forum stakeholder members come out here too and really use Think Tech Hawaii for uh, you know the best uh, to the best effect in getting their viewpoints out and get, allow them to share with the overall community as well, not just like an internal bunch of people sitting around on the table. So this is something we can we can explore. 
Exactly. Uh, any final words before I, 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 I shut us down? Just that we are excited to be back and to be engaging with the community again. And we have already received so much good feedback and really looking forward to continuing this process. So thanks for having me on and looking forward to future discussions. Sounds good. We're back. We're back. <laughs> okay, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, you've been watching Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech Hawaii. Today, we've been talking story with graduate assistant Megan Russell about the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and its evolving vision and plan under the new leadership of HNEI and Principal Investigator Mark Glick. So thank you very much, uh, Megan. And thanks to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Mitch Yuan. We'll be back in two weeks with another fantastic edition of Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha, everyone. Aloha.